Shelley wrote Frankenstein during the summer of 1816. Several individuals had gathered for a vacation at a luxury home on Lake Geneva in Switzerland. Lord Byron was there, as was 18-year-old Mary Shelley, Percy Bysshe Shelley's partner, Shelley himself, and Dr. John Polidori. The occasion had the atmosphere of a commune, with free love being one of its pillars. Mary Shelley inherited her parents' strong moral values and was uncomfortable with the sexual communism that occurred around the lake in Switzerland. The English people didn't appreciate it either, dubbing the participating authors the League of Incest. The literary consequence of this trip was the result of bad weather that prevented the travelers from leaving the property. To alleviate boredom from being cooped up inside, the group started reading gothic books and telling ghost tales. Finally, they decided to hold a competition to determine who could create the most terrifying and innovative ghost tale. Mary Shelley, while a teenager, created Frankenstein, which was published two years later in 1818. Mary Shelley's book Frankenstein is as astounding as the invention of young scientist Victor Frankenstein. So exactly how did an 18-year-old girl create this masterpiece? Mary Shelley created a work that is unanimously considered the finest of its type at a period in her life, and from a background that would make such an accomplishment seem implausible. Mary, the daughter of Mary Wollstonecraft and William Godwin, the greatest philosopher of his day, was born amid literary brilliance, which might account for some of the reasons. Godwin was the creator of liberalism as we know it today. At the time, some considered him an anarchist or a free thinker. He, like the French philosopher Rousseau, was radical, nearly revolutionary. Mary Wollstonecraft, Mary's mother, died a few days after her daughter was born in 1797, which was also a gloomy year in other respects. It was a time of upheaval and national struggle throughout Europe. Maps were being redrawn and civilizations were reorganized. From infancy, Mary was surrounded by the greatest and most daring thinkers of her time. Despite its debased versions, the original Frankenstein is a masterpiece of great culture. It has aspects of Godwin, Wollstonecraft, and Shelley, as well as other notable authors from the past. The novel's full title is Frankenstein, or The Modern Prometheus. Prometheus the deity who gave humanity fire and was punished for it. In this sense, one could argue he was the father of science. We may wonder why, if Mary wished to study such topics as human nature, she did not create an epic like Milton's or a verse tragedy like Percy's Prometheus Unbound. The explanation is fairly simple. Gender, but grand poetry, like high tragedy, was completely male-dominated. However, since fiction was considered an inferior category, women were free here. The novel is frequently referred to as the bourgeois or home epic, and like the physical domestic arena, the house and its kitchen, provided a space for women to express themselves without being oppressed by males. The plot of Shelley's horror novel is complicated. She had instinctively learned several techniques of the trade from German authors. Frankenstein has an epistolary framework. It starts with a sailor writing to his sister from St. Petersburg, Russia. As we will see in Wuthering Heights, epistolary frames have the effect of cooling down a fiery narrative. They soften the story, making it less sensational than it could have been. The novel's first location is also physically cool. It begins in the frigid north, on ice flows. A ship is engulfed by icebergs, but the captain notices, in the distance, a massive figure being carried on a sled by dogs. This is the first time we see the monster created by Victor Frankenstein in his laboratory. The backstory develops gradually, as it must in horror literature. Shelley's story is crafty wetting the reader's hunger but not fulfilling it. The plot is complicated yet incredibly compelling. 
The clever Swiss student Victor Frankenstein is captivated by the galvanic force of electricity. When electricity is applied to a corpse, it twitches and reanimates. Victor will bestow to humanity the immense power of electricity, just as Prometheus bestowed the double-edged gift of fire. Frankenstein is also regarded as the forefather of contemporary science fiction due to his use of technology. Victor collects body parts, including animal parts, from morgues, cemeteries, and slaughterhouses, and arranges them in what he refers to as my workshop of filthy creation. When the creature is eventually given life, Victor is terrified by its look. As we all know, God created Adam and found him to be wonderful. So why is Victor disgusted? Does he believe he has committed heresy by becoming a creator rather than a creation? This interpretation seems improbable. The narrative might be allegorized in many ways. One appealing explanation is that Mary Shelley, the political philosopher's daughter, wants us to reflect on the French Revolution. Wordsworth once stated that being young and present during the start of the French Revolution was bliss. However, ten years later, during the terror and the eventual war with England, that happiness had transformed into something terrible. Is Mary Shelley alluding to the youthful revolutionary's optimism, which nearly always ends in disappointment? Of course, a good literary book has several meanings. We could find another answer in Mary's history and specific details about her connection with Shelley. Shelley was a firm believer in free love and sexual communism, whilst Mary was not. She was a young and optimistic girl. She had sexual encounters with Percy when she was quite young and had two children before the age of 18. Mary's first child, Clara, died a few months after birth, driving her into postnatal depression. Clara's death, along with the loss of her mother, must have left Mary with terrible memories of her birth. The creation of Frankenstein may reflect postnatal depression, which is exacerbated by Mary Shelley's home instability. Victor has given birth to this creature, he is a mother, and Mary Shelley found motherhood to be a complicated and unpleasant experience. That intricacy is captured in the novel's dramatic genesis scene. The monster then goes on to have a miserable career. Although he is not a criminal by nature, being removed from his surroundings transforms him into one. This is a fairly liberal, Godwinian notion. Criminals are not fundamentally wicked, but are motivated by life circumstances. Following Frankenstein, Mary Shelley wrote more books, but none were as excellent as her first. Her personal situation deteriorated when Shelley drowned in an Italian lake. She became a lonely lady and never attained the same level of inventiveness as in that magnificent summer of 1816. If you have any suggestion of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.